Good evening, everyone. Usually I speak at the end of Mass uh, if I need to, but today I'm going to light the, the menorah at the synagogue, so I have to run over there at the end of Mass. So I'd like to just say a few words before Mass begins. Father Alessandro is going to have this Mass. Um, two things, one spiritual and one temporal. Of course, the most important is spiritual. As we get ready for Christmas, we are bustling around and, and making sure that our homes are ready and, and everything else is ready and all the lists are getting prepared and, and shopping is all being done. One of the things that we cannot, we must not forget is to spiritually prepare ourselves, most importantly by going to confession. Beginning on Monday and continuing for a week, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the following Monday, we will have 24 hours of confessions from 3 to 5 p.m. and 8 to 10 p.m. So if you're busy working in the city, you got plenty of time to come because I'll be in here until 10 o'clock every night. And if you come to me, it's one Hail Mary genocide on down. I don't care what you did or who you did it with. <laughs> never be afraid to come to Father Duffy for confession because I'm real easy. In my entire priesthood, I've never given more than one Hail Mary no matter what I've heard. And I will tell you, I have heard every sin you could possibly imagine. One Hail Mary especially this Christmas time. It's important to prepare ourselves and to give ourselves the gift of God's mercy, God's peace, and the assurance of God's love to receive that sacrament. If it's been five months or five years or 50 years, don't be afraid. Please come to confession. It is my favorite thing of being a priest, not because I get all the dirt, but because I get to be the agent of God's mercy. And of course, as you all know, everything that we hear in the confessional comes with us to the grave. No judge, no governor, nobody could ever force any priest to reveal anything whatsoever for any reason from the confessional. We hope that we'll see you, or at least hear you, not knowing who's who, sometime this next week. 3 to 5 and 8 to 10 p.m. That is the most important thing that I could say right now. The second is important, but not as important as the first. As you all know, we are restricted in how many people can come to Mass, but also because people are starting to feel uncomfortable, and normally we get around 3,000 people every Sunday at the Cathedral Parish. Now we're averaging about 1,400. That's quite a drop in attendance. And there's a direct correlation between that and our collections. Our collections have fallen by about $5,000 to $7,000 every week. That means for the last three months, we are $50,000 under where we usually are. If you extrapolate that out over the course of a year, that means we'll be down $200,000 in collections. Similarly, our Christmas collection is normally $225,000. This year, who knows what it's gonna be. And so I'm here simply to fill you in on where we are and to ask for help. If you are able to, I humbly ask you to consider increasing your offertory during this difficult time for our parish so that we can continue to provide the great services that this cathedral parish does. We have to be in this together. That's the most important thing. We recognize that there are so many people suffering, that there are so many businesses suffering, the Cathedral Parish is a part of that as well. And so as we consider our offertory for the next couple of weeks, but especially at Christmas time, I'd ask that you simply consider that and consider all the good work that the Cathedral Parish does and what we can continue doing together. My friends, I'm so grateful for all of your incredible generosity already, for your presence here, and I'll say this tomorrow for those watching from home, we are so very grateful, most importantly, that you're here and that you continue to support us with your prayers and with your good works. If you're able to, we humbly ask that you would consider being generous with us this Christmas time and going forward so that we can continue to meet the good works of this parish, this cathedral parish. Thank you all, and Father Alessandro will begin Mass in just a moment.
Thank you, Father Duffy. We celebrate the third Sunday of Advent. The celebrant of this Mass, as Father Duffy said, is Father Alessandro de Luz. and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Nativity. Enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord in my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, 
so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in all circumstances give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophetic utterances, test everything, retain what is good, refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless, blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Testimony 
to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. And the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think some of the most, maybe the most important period of our lives is sometimes during our teenage years as a teenager, because as a teenager we begin to grow and we begin to, in a sense, form our identity. And so, as you know, as we enter high school, we we become more and more detached from our parents and begin to discover who we are. And I think the classic example we see of this struggle of identity is in the movie The Breakfast Club. Maybe some of you watched it. I know it was many years ago. It takes place in the 80s. And what's interesting about the movie is that you see all these different characters um, who, in a sense, belong to a, a clique. And so you have the jock on one side. You have the cool girl on, on the other. You have, like, the, you know, the emo kid and, and the emo girl and heavy metal guy. And you have the geek kid who's sort of like always trying to get A's. And, and in this very strange movie, that they all end up being away from their cliques at detention. So each of the characters are sort of standing alone. They're not with their normal group. And then they're forced, in a sense, to engage or converse with these people who they would never, ever talk to in school or in class. And you begin to see sort of the tension as well as the fruit of their dialogue. That, in one sense, they feel misunderstood, but also begin to understand each other in a much deeper way than they would at the beginning of the film. And what's very interesting is that I think in the middle or towards the end of the film, you see that they have like sort of like this group therapy, and they're all gathered together, and they just start opening their hearts to each other. Because the question that was asked was, will we still be friends on Monday after detention? And the cool girl pretty much says no because I can't be associated with you outside of this group. And he starts this whole debate or like argument, seeing how the shallowness of these identities that they've all kind of taken upon themselves, the jock, the geek, the nerd, the, the emo or the, the heavy metal guy, the cool kid. And then we begin to see how this identity that they have sort of formed themselves in high school are not enough. And I think maybe in some ways we can all resonate uh, with those characters. That when we were in a teenager, maybe we also kind of belong to that clique. You know, maybe you were in the football team, or maybe you were part of the debate team, or the chess club team, or whatever. That somehow we had found this group of friends that we sort of shared an identity with based on a hobby, or, or a, a, simil a, you know, a similar attraction. But at the same time, we see how that it's not enough. That if I'm, a, if I'm a nerd and my identity is based on getting straight A's, well, what happens when I get a B or a C or an E, God forbid, an F? What happens to my identity? Am I no longer the, the geek? Or if I'm kicked off the football team, what happens then? 
And so we see that this identity is so temporary, shallow. And somehow this identity even continues on even to our adult life. How many of us identify ourselves based on our profession? Well, he's John the doctor, or that's Mary the lawyer, or engineer, or accountant, or teacher. That we allow our careers in some ways to replace the cliques we formed in high school. And then we begin to only associate ourselves with just our jobs. But even, we, even then we know that doesn't quite capture who we fully are. That there's more to John the doctor than just him working his 9-to-5 job. That he also has other interests. And in some sense, we recognize that in our freedom, we form these identities, but we always know that it's never quite enough. We put on masks playing the role society wants us to play. And why do we do this? Why do we put on the mask of the jock, or the mask of the lawyer, or the mask of whatever that sort of we've adopted? I think primarily we do this for happiness. Because we think that if I can get into the football team, then I'll be accepted. Or if I can just find these group of friends who I can get together with on Tuesday nights to play chess with or Dungeons and Dragons, then I can finally be accepted. We take on this mask or this identity because we fear rejection. And we know that even when we do accept those masks, even when we, do, when we are accepted by these groups of people, we are always surrendering a part of ourselves to that identity as those kids in the breakfast club did. And I think in the gospel today, we had this very important question. And you might be wondering, well, what, why, are you, why is Deacon Donovan going on about this whole identity crisis? Because the gospel today precisely asked that question to John the Baptist. Who are you? Are you the Christ? And John says, I'm not the Christ. Are you Elijah? John says, no. I'm not Elijah. Are you a prophet? And again, John says, no, I am not a prophet. And so they're kind of scratching their heads. Well, you don't fit into any of these boxes. Who are you? And John the Baptist says, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. John's identity transcends all our generic and normative labels. It runs deeper than what we, what we want to understand about him. Because John's identity is rooted in God, in God alone. This Sunday, we celebrate Gaudete Sunday, which is meant to be joyful, that this, that this is the, we're meant to rejoice that we're approaching Christmas and it's becoming near, and that this notion of joy, of his happiness, like, why is John being asked, why is he the central figure? Because I think joy is more than just having lots of things or having nice cars or having a, a, a nice life. Joy is the awareness of our identity as beloved children of the Father. If there's one thing I would like for you to leave this cathedral with, is that you are loved by God. More than that, God is madly in love with you. He's crazy for you. But what we do we do with that love? We hide behind our masks, and we say to ourselves, I'm a sinner. I can't possibly be loved by him. Our identity has to move past those masks. We have to move away from these labels that we place upon ourselves. Because in the end of the day, we will never be rejected by God. He will never reject you if we keep coming to him with faith, hope, and love. We come to the Eucharist today and we reflect on Christmas season 
on the Incarnation. Jesus, who was the second person of the Trinity, became man. He embraced our human identity so that we can share in his divine identity. That ultimately, our jobs will be taken away and will no longer be doctors or lawyers. Our friends will eventually be taken away as the time of life moves on. What will be left? God. God alone will be the last. And he will be there waiting for you to embrace him. Allow his love, his peace to come into you as you receive the Eucharist. That when we say, or when Father and I say, the body of Christ, you will say, Amen. And recognize that when we say the body of Christ, what we're saying is that that's our identity. That when we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, we are one with him. And that is through his identity, through his grace, that we receive the happiness that we truly crave for. That he alone gives us a share in his divine life. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We await with great longing the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We bring our prayers before him. For the church that she may bring good news to the poor, healing to the brokenhearted, and liberty to captives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, from the people of our parish and the children of our school, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that it may truly know the peace given by Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who work in health care, that God will give wisdom to those working to contain the virus, insight to those searching for a treatment or vaccine, and strength to those caring for the sick. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick of our parish especially, Georgie Ritter, Jack and Carol Harrigan, Camille Carello, Eileen Loftus O'Brien, and Joan Mathai. For the repose of the souls of the faithful departed especially, Juana Serrano Flores, Joan T. Bladell, and Cornelius M. Griffin. For the intention of this holy mass, Thomas Murphy III, Philip McEntee, Mary Carroll, Lisa Burke, Gregory Hamill, and Michael Clark. 
and for the needs and intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the splendor of your glory dawn in our hearts. We pray, Almighty God, that all shadows of the night may be scattered and we may be shown to be children of the light by the advent of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please place your sacrificial offering to St. Agnes in the collection about to be taken. In addition, your envelope for religious retirement may also be placed in this collection. And thank you for your continued support and generosity. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest. We who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. As without end we are clear.
most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, where they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving him thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty for the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as ones you were pleased to accept, the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. 
To us also, your servants, through those sinners, open your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellanus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with the Spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
reminder that those who choose to receive on the tongue to please present yourself to the priest only to receive Holy Communion. Thank you. 